Hi, I'm Tyler with Homesear, and in this video I'm going to be showing you how to set up the Google Home Assistant in HS3. To get started, first check to make sure that your HS3 software is up to date. Once you've done that, navigate to homesear.com, and then go to Products at the top, Home Control Software, and Google Home Integration. This page is going to cover a lot of what we're going to go over here today, but it's going to be a great reference to follow when setting this up. When you're ready to continue, go ahead and launch the Google Home mobile app and click on the menu button on the top left. Then select Home Control from the menu, and now the plus symbol in the bottom right hand corner. From this list, scroll down until you find Home Seer, then select it and log in using your MyHS account. If you haven't already created a MyHS account, you can do so on myhs.homeseer.com. Once the account is linked, you'll be presented with a list of the devices that Google can control. To continue, click Done at the top, and then Got It at the bottom of the next page. You'll be presented with a list of devices that Google Home has found in your Home Seer system, and at this point you'll be able to start controlling them using voice commands. Next I want to show you some important voice control features built into Home Seer, starting with the way that devices are laid out inside of the device list. Each device is going to have its own floor value, room value, and name, so you can use any one of these values in any order to communicate with the device. For example, with this overhead light, I can say, OK Google, turn on overhead light because it's a device in the list that is unique. I can also say, turn on family room overhead light or turn on first floor overhead light. Other devices like this thermostat can be controlled the same way. The only difference is that you'll use the command set instead of on and off. This particular thermostat has four controllable child devices. There's the fan mode, the heating and cooling mode, and then the heating and cooling set points. To control a set point on the thermostat, you would say, OK Google, set thermostat to 70 degrees. The system will know whether to control the heating or cooling set point based on what you have the mode set to. Now let's take a look at the voice control settings that are available for each device inside of Homesear. By clicking on the name, we'll be brought to a configuration page for the device where we'll see many different settings and a few that are specific to voice control. First of which is the second option at the top, which is labeled voice command. This is where you can enter in a custom name or phrase for communicating with a specific device. This will override the name of the device when controlling it. This is used when you have a device with a really long name and you just want to refer to it with something much shorter. Next, we have the voice command checkbox. This is going to be enabled by default, but can be disabled. This is very useful if you have devices that you may want to prevent people from accessing, like door locks, security systems, or even a product like a water pump that you simply don't want turned off. Lastly, we have the confirm voice command checkbox. This doesn't work with Google, but I did want to point it out just so there wouldn't be any confusion. With other voice assistants, this checkbox would be used to confirm a command before it's executed. The last thing I want to show you is in the status graphics tab. If you're not familiar with this page, it's going to have settings for the statuses and control options for your devices. But for voice control, there's a section here called Control Use. This is used by Google Home in order to know what type of control options the device actually has. In the drop-down menu, we can see there are other options available for lighting, locks, and thermostats. But by default, when you add a device, all of this should already be configured for you. The last voice control related setting I want to show you is going to be in the Events section of Homesear. If you want to control an event through Google, you're going to need to enter in a custom name under the voice command field. Whatever you enter here is what you'll use to issue the command. For example, I have my event here with the voice command of away mode. So to activate this event, I would tell Google to run or activate away mode, and it'll simply trigger all of the actions in the event. The last and probably most important thing to note here is that if you add any new devices, make any changes to the settings for voice control, or add any voice commands for any devices or events, you will need to resync your devices through Google. In order to do that, simply issue the command, OK Google, sync my devices. Google will confirm the command, and then within a few seconds you should be able to refresh the list in the mobile app, and every new device or setting should now be applied. I hope this video helped answer any questions you had and get everything set up for you. If you still have questions or concerns, please feel free to reach out to our support department, we'd be happy to help. And that's it for this video, I will see you next time.